In this video, I want to talk a little bit about isolation transformers and variable isolation transformers and why they're important in the servicing of electronic equipment. Now, an isolation transformer comes in different sizes and shapes, and this particular one is a fixed uh, voltage. In other words, whatever voltage goes into this side, in this case it's 110 volts, that's the same voltage that comes out of this side. On this other one I have over here, this one's variable so I can change the voltage coming out on the output. You're probably wondering, if you're not familiar with isolation transformer, what's the value of having a transformer that doesn't change the voltage in any way? Why would you want to have a, a transformer that simply puts the same voltage out on one side as what goes in on the other? Well, the main reason for that is, is you're, you want to um, make sure that when you're working on a set that you're electronically isolated from any potential of getting shocked, for one, well, let me see if I can explain it in a simpler language. Earlier I showed how I could make my own transformer, and I could induce a current in one coil simply by putting it near another coil. You can see I'm lighting up the light here. Every time I move this coil close enough, the light lights up. And the electromagnetic field is um, induced in the primary coil, which is the one I'm holding, and the secondary coil. It's uh, generating a high enough voltage to to go across the uh, bulb there, and the, the steel helps transfer the current. Now this is actually electrically isolated. In other words, there's no actual electrical connection between this coil and the one beneath me here. There's no hidden wires or anything like that. These are just steel bars here, and uh, you can see if I pick this up, there's no, no hidden wires. This is energy transferred electromagnetically. Well, Inside of a transformer, you have essentially the same thing. You basically have two coils, and the magnetic field off one coil is transferred into the other coil through a magnetic field. Same with this one here. It does the same thing. The energy of uh, one coil is uh, transferred to the other. The only difference is I can vary the output voltage on this one. Now, if you look at the schematic of a transformer, it looks something like this. Well, not something like this. It looks exactly like this. Let me keep it clear. Um, if you were to consider what this all means on the schematic diagram, this would be considered the steel center part of my transformer that I just made with the steel bar here. In other words, when I put the steel bar inside the coil, that's the equivalent of my transformer core. And the energy is transferred from one side to the other, but there's no actual connection between here and here. And so you call that being electrically isolated. Now, there's another type of transformer that might have multiple wires on the output side of it. In fact, here's one where this could be the primary. And on the secondary side, you've got several different voltages coming out of it, depending on where you measure from. In other words, if you measure from here to here, you'll have one voltage. If you measure from here to here, you'll have a higher voltage. And if you measure from here to here, you'll have a higher voltage still. Uh, nevertheless, these two are still isolated. There's no actual physical or electrical connection between this side and this side the energy is all transferred through electromagnetism. Now, a lot of times on the old uh, electronic equipment you'd run into a problem where on the outlet itself one of these slots on the outlet would actually be hooked to the chassis of the equipment you were working on. In fact, it wasn't all that uncommon in the old days for a refrigerator to be hooked to one side of the uh, outlet to where maybe you touch a water pipe or some other appliance, you touch your stove and then you touch your refrigerator and uh, because it's, one is hooked to one side of the plug and one to the other naturally you're going to get shocked. Now a lot of people don't understand that an outlet is actually considered only hot on, on one side. Now that may not make sense when you call it hot because after all when we think of hot we think of, of negative and positive. There is no negative and positive with alternating current. They keep alternating but the reason we call it hot is again because you have the potential of getting shocked between one side and earth ground. In other words, if I was touching a water pipe and I put my uh, a key in one of these slots here, I could get a real nice shock. Again, on electronic equipment, um, it wasn't uncommon for like, let's say this chassis here could be potentially hooked to one side of the outlet. So it's a safety factor to have an isolation transformer. Another place they're handy to have is let's say you're working on a TV set and 
normally if, if the TV is working properly, there should be no actual electrical connection between your antenna jack and the coaxial cable going to your um, cable box or wherever it goes, or your antenna. Now, I've seen this happen several times where you'll be touching your antenna connector and you touch the TV input jack and you get a nice shock. Now, if the circuit was working correctly, you shouldn't get shocked because this is supposed to be electrically isolated. But again, if you had an isolation transformer, it's a safety factor that protects you from being hurt. Now, I remember when I first got started in electronics, you were always supposed to use one, uh, and especially if you're using test equipment. For example, let's say I'm, I'm going to test something using my oscilloscope here, and I've got my probe in my hand. And let's just say I'm going to hook my, my ground lead to the chassis on the TV before I test voltages. Uh, I don't have a chassis in reach, but you get the idea. Um, what, is, what if the chassis was hot in relationship to my ground here, and I'm checking for voltages? Uh, you'd have a problem. You'd, you'd blow something out. So again, that's the main use of an isolation transformer. And this principle of isolation will come up in um, some of my other videos where I'll go into explaining a little bit better.